Hello, I'm Connell. And I'm Emily. And we are standing in a really special ecosystem that is filled with plants that are at risk of going extinct. Now these plants only exist today because of the stewardship by indigenous peoples who have been here since time immemorial, and they continue this stewardship today. Uh, good day everybody, my name is Papakia, I come from this land here in Kusainich, and I come from the village Hochatlip, and I also come from Moachat. I've been working at Pepekin Out for seven years. Pepekin Out is a native plant nursery located at the Tlewell New Tribal School. That's home for where we keep all of our plants that we add back into Kusainich territory. We take the youth out to do restoration, to remove invasive plants, but also throughout the school year, we've been teaching children how to propagate plants, native plants that are gonna be reintroduced back into our uh, Kusainich territory. I come from a family of people who really enjoy plants, plant people on both sides of my family, so I came by it really naturally. But it wasn't until I was in my 20s when I joined the Sinchothanese program uh, to learn Sinchothan through UVic that I started to learn more about the plants. And then it was my cohort and my uncles who actually decided to designate me as the plant person for our cohort. So being able to uh, hone into a specialty was something that that really helped me get into my love for native plants. These Kwasla'o Anoks, these uh, Camas Meadows, have always been uh, stewarded by uh, my ancestors. So when I come to these places here, I feel like I'm visiting family. <laughs> Good day, my name is Tiffany Joseph. My Sinchatha name is Shkalasawit. My involvement with stewardship of these lands started around 2014. I started learning about the indigenous plants and how my ancestors uh, would make medicines from them and also learned the skills of how to propagate uh, these plants so that um, we could increase um, the populations of the indigenous plants. I work with HAT, Habitat Acquisition Trust, um, stewarding this park. Indigenous stewardship is being a good host and helping people have a good mindset and being welcoming and also educating people about colonial history and the harms of these invasive species but also the wealth of the indigenous plants of the indigenous peoples and how the way that we cared for the land and cared for the foods and served the foods and prepared medicines and harvested medicines allowed for us to be people who had safe societies um, we, our societies were rooted in kindness. When I think about what is the difference between how I promote stewardship as an Indigenous person to these lands, I incorporate teachings from my family and from my community and my ancestors. The teachings that my family have given me comes from time immemorial. My family was given responsibilities to care for this land. We were able to care for these lands um, in harmony and create abundance, create biodiversity. And so it's possible for everyone living here to be able to do the same thing. So Tiffany, we're here in one of my favorite places. It's the Gary Oak Meadow. Can you tell me a little bit more about it though? We would be more inclined to call it a Kwasa'al Anuk. So Kwasa'al Anuk is like a camas area. We would center the camas Kwasa'al because the way we would steward these lands would be through controlled burns. And we did the controlled burns to help provide nutrients to the camas. Camas is a purple lily. There's some, some of these purple lilies here uh, in this meadow right now. The Gary Oak tree, what we, which we call Chung Ech, is a companion plant to the camas. Um, so the leaves of the Chung Ech, they'll drop on the ground and you know they're, they're acidic. So what my ancestors did with their ingenuity is decide, we'll burn this to transform the acidity and alkalize it so that the leaf matter would become nutrients and help build up soil. The warmth of that fire, of course, would be impacting the camas bulbs as they're underneath the soil. It has resulted in the most biodiverse ecosystem that you can find in so-called BC and there's still evidence of that today. You know, that's why when you 
go to a Gary Oak uh, meadow, you're not just going to find camas, you're going to find sea blush, a lot of sea blush. Right now we have larkspur in bloom. You'll also find chocolate lily. I don't know how many ecosystems have um, companion plants that are a mighty oak and a tiny little bulb that produces probably the most beautiful purple little lily that you'll ever see in the world. This flower grows from a bulb. The camas bulb was our food staple. So how today we might eat potatoes or rice, my people, my ancestors, the Kusetich people would eat camas, camas bulbs. Pakia, it is so amazing to be here in this beautiful meadow. Can you tell us about what stewardship activities are you doing at the moment? We're in the Penafong moon, and that means that it's the camas harvest moon. So if you'd like to, we can actually go harvest some bulbs. I have a, a digging stick and we can dig some up and I'll show you what, what we do. This is a traditional camas digging stick. It's made out of it's ash, our ironwood, and then it had been burnt to become harder. And then we have a cedar handle. And you'll find a lot of these materials in the Gary Oak ecosystem. So you find all the tools you need around what you're gonna be harvesting. I see I loosened a small couple bulbs here. So just use your hands. So just using your hands. Yeah. I see some here already. Oh, excellent. Yeah, you found one of the bigger ones. It's a bigger one? Yeah, and here's one of the little ones. Wow, that's much smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah, it is. Yes. So this is one of the young camas bulbs here, and the best ones to eat are about the size of our fists. It's always been um, a process for us to be out here digging up the camas, separating the bulbs. The kwisla'ols are really important food for the Kwisainich people. We've been stewarding the kwisla'ol anuk or the camas meadows since time memorial, since the beginning of time. And this is a really sacred job to the Kwisainich women and folks to prepare our food. It's a natural process, so it was a gift that was given to us from Hales, but it's also been stewarded by the Kusainich people, specific women and families who would be designated stewards, who would monitor all the Kusla'o Anuk, and we would maintain them to have certain crops in certain areas. It's almost like a potato. It tastes almost like the same consistency as a sweet potato. Oh, ah, like, interesting. Yeah. So we've obviously come into this park today. We've dug up some camas, harvested it. Um, and you're going to take it back and probably cook it and eat it. Um, is this something that we can all be doing though? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I have treaty rights, Douglas treaty rights, which means I'm allowed to come harvest in my traditional territory. So not everybody's able to come and harvest uh, camas. But that being said, you can grow your own camas too. If you have it growing in your garden, if you have it growing in pots as well, then I think it's fair for people to be able to harvest that. We, the Hussainich people and our neighbors, the Lakomian people, we had an abundance of camas, an abundance of food. Um, we didn't have to go hungry because of this food source and neither did any of the species, the other species that live here and call these lands home. They were also able to eat camas and we lived amongst one another um, in harmony. A lot of the work I've done over the years has been removing invasive plants like scotch broom and English ivy and Himalayan blackberry. And of course, educating people about um, why we need to remove these invasive plants. Um, so for example, scotch broom changes the makeup of the soil so that only it lives. It's a very selfish plant, self-centered plant, wants itself to live and nothing else. And so that is not in harmony with the ecosystem. We can have a positive impact and these problems that seem insurmountable are actually achievable if we work together and if we have that good mindset. I feel like that cannot be understated, how the positive mindset when you're on the land can make a difference. During this time of reconciliation is a really great opportunity to learn about the native ecosystems to where you're living is really important to learn uh, what to look out for to help it thrive. There are all different types of things that we can all do individually. So if you know about the different types of invasive species in your region, you can just easily pull a couple of those out for a couple minutes and that makes a huge difference. Everyone who lives in the Gary Oak ecosystem, as well as the Coastal Douglas Fir Biogeoclimatic Zone, are responsible of ensuring that this rare ecosystem that you won't find anywhere else in the world is stewarded properly. If we took the time 
to be responsible for how we care for these lands, I can only imagine what ripple effect that might have. Okay, so we've had the best time learning about these plants with you today here in this beautiful meadow. Thank you so much for having us. The Kwetla'o Anuk has been stewarded since time of memorial, so there's so much diversity here and so much for us to learn about here. So is there anything that we can do to show our respect to the meadow? Oh yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. I'll teach you how to say thank you to the canvas. So we say, Haishka Kwetla'o. Haishka Kwetla'o. Yeah, just like we that. Wonderful. Hey.